Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ghost 11 Vice Squad, brought to you by Anadromus Fly Company. My name is Bryce Miller, and I'm your Sunday host. After you've watched this clip, head over to our awesome online stores at fishingandoutdoors.ca or fishingandoutdoors.net for U.S. and international shoppers. And go to, a, to the shop for our sponsor's products and so much more. Today is the, at the Vice, I'm going to show you how to tie the pheasant bugger. I want to point out that this is different from Gunnar Brian Barr's uh, pheasant bugger. This is jigged and completely different. It uses a lot of different materials. Also a great fly. Check it out. Uh, but this is a pattern brought to you by Bryce Miller Flies exclusively. So I'm going to first show you guys a full pheasant pouch. Let's see if I can get the whole thing in there. Got the rump feathers, which are kind of the more, uh, what's the word, uh, known feather. Then you have the tail, obviously, it's also very known. We're not going to use the tail in this clip. Lots of different colors there, lots of different materials. We're going to start a thread with my uh, new bobbin. Just got it in the mail today. It is the soft grip ceramic bobbin from Manitromus Fly Company. I wanted a longer bobbin and I like the idea of having a stronger grip, so we're going to try this out. Work our thread down. Oh, and uh, point this out. This is a size 8 4X long hook and what I believe is a 3.8 millimeter bead and 6 wraps of lead wire in .02 size. Double check me on that bead size in the description. I'll look that up after the video. <laughs> so first of all, we're going to look at our pheasant skin here. And I want some marabou feathers, but I want the darker marabou feathers. So we're going to go just underneath the wing here in the back. See the darker feathers? That's what we're going to use. I'm going to use three of them. Two of them, sorry. I'm going to use two of them. For this tail. Pluck them straight off. Align the tips. Pull them back. Get rid of these rougher parts. Tie them in about the length of the hook shank. And then we're going to tie a third one on top. The reason we don't do three right away is so that we can actually get a solid tie in point. So then here's our third feather. Just gonna snip them off in line with the lead wire. That way when we work our thread up, it's actually gonna meet the lead wire perfectly. That way we don't have random spots in our taper. Awesome. wild ones right there, just pluck them out. Now we're, the only part of this fly, well besides hook and weight, that isn't pheasant is we're going to add a little bit of flash. This is kind of a burnt orange color, I forget exactly the name of it. And we're going to tie in two strands right there. And then we're going to kind of pull it over top of the hook shank, tie them in on the other side of the tail. Turn them off even. Perfect. Those will lay back a little better once we get the next parts in. Now we're going to go back to our pheasant pelt. We have the rump feathers, which I talked about a little bit. We're going to start at the top of the rump. And as we use them, we're going to work our way down the rump. So we're going to start with our feather like that. Continue to pull back notch out right here and then we're going to tie it in from there we don't need this whole stem we're going to cut it a little bit short we're going to grab it with our aqua pliers we're going to pull back these fibers as you wrap, tie off, 
And if you guys are not good at wrapping soft tackles like that, you will be at the end of this fly. <laughs> I promise. We're going to pull another feather from about the same spot, maybe a little bit farther down. And we're going to do this a few times. But after this feather, we'll have another step. So once again, lay your fibers back. Cut, notch, whatever you want to call it. Grab with our hackle pliers. Peel back. As I'm sure you guys are guessing, this fly has a ton of movement in the water because of all the feathers that go into it. Which obviously drives the fish nuts if you've seen any streamer in the water. Alright, one more feather then we're going to add another step to this. So once again, just a little bit bigger. Don't want to go too quick to get bigger because eventually you run out of size. Got away from us here. Awesome. So now we're gonna add another step. We're gonna go back to our pheasant pelt here. We're gonna go back to the marabouy side. Marabouy. And then we're gonna go a little bit lower, where there's a little bit lighter colored marabou feathers. Just a plethora of feathers in this thing. And we're just gonna pull one. We are gonna put it up here on top. It's gonna cause a contrast in color in our bugger from top to bottom. Because if you've ever seen a bait fish before, you know that their belly is normally a lighter color than the top. So by adding this marabou on top, even though it's a lighter marabou, it's darker than the pheasant rump, which is on bottom. You guys can see the contrast there. Awesome. So then we're going to wrap forward a little bit again, make sure that we're even with the wire so we don't cause an issue there in a little bit. So you wrap over the wire, unlike what I did, keep it in place. <laughs> Alright, so now some more pheasant rump feathers, still working on our taper up. Notch. Let's see what I'm doing. Tie it in. Hack pliers. That stem. By the way, you guys are seeing this long stem. You think you'd rather wrap by the stem than the hackle pliers? You can do that. But with these hackle pliers, I can just let it sit down here and then peel back fibers at the same time. So there is an advantage of the hackle pliers even if you do have a long stem, the weight brings an advantage. Something I kind of ignored when I learned how to, fly, how to tie flies that I wish I wouldn't have. There's a Bryce's little hint of the day. Can we start doing that end of the day, end of the video. Who knows? So we're gonna bring another feather, another pheasant rump feather. And I, I don't know if you guys are, you probably aren't seeing what I'm doing, but as I grab them off the rump, I'm grabbing a few feathers. That way I can keep an automatic taper with me. 
I just have to remember which ones are the bigger and which ones are the smaller feathers. Taking a few feathers at a time helps. I'm trying to keep a solid taper. Tie that feather in. You can cut or not cut the stem. Sometimes it causes issues when you grab with the hack pliers, so if I forget, um, that's why I didn't. And then I hate myself a little bit later because it causes issues. So just, just cut the stem before you grab it with the hack pliers. We have two hints today. So then we're just gonna continue along right there. We're gonna add another uh, light marabou feather now. So once again, we're going to the back of our cape. Or full pelt, I guess. And then we're just grabbing one of these lighter feathers. Want it to be lighter than the tail, darker than the uh, rump. And we're gonna lay this one so that it shows. We want it to actually go a little bit longer than the first one. That way it gives the illusion of the of a bigger taper there. Getting bigger as we go forward. All right, so we got the next feather, another pheasant rump feather. Lots of pheasant rump feathers in here. Sure, we turn that off. Oh, what am I doing? Did exactly what I told you guys not to do. <laughs> Cut that stem, grab with your hack pliers. Makes everything easier. You saw how I struggled there, right? A great example if I would have meant to do that. Pull your fibers back. All right, let's keep it going. We are almost done with wrapping these soft tackles. If you hate wrapping soft tackles, I have great news for you. We only have like seven or eight more. I'm kidding, not that many. Just a few more. You can tell our high fibers are getting pretty big at this point. So continuing that taper. Now this one's going to try to flare out on you, just kind of put a couple wraps over top. That way it all lays back like it should. And that'll give us room for one more marabou feather and then the final hack of feather. So one more light marabou feather. Top. Once again, just the slightest bit longer than the last one. Alright, and for our last feather is a collar. We're going to go back to our pheasant pelt. You guys can see the rump right here, right? 
I don't know what I'm asking, so you guys obviously can't hear me yet. Um, and then a little bit farther down, I think it's on front. A little bit farther down, you have these dark feathers. I'm not sure if that's any better. You got these dark feathers. We want one of those dark feathers. And we want a relatively long fibered one. Not overly long, we don't want to cover the whole fly, about maybe halfway. The dark brown like finish really brings it together. We're gonna prepare it just like we did the rump feathers. And we are going to grab with our hackle pliers. We trim this stem. Pull back. Ooh. And pull back. Got a little more towards the bead than I wanted to. It's gonna be okay, it's not something I plan to do. In the end, the fly looks fine. Pull everything back. Take our bodkin here. Just check that each of our fibers are in the right place, as we always do. Gotta tease them out. So, and then put them back. As it gives it a fluffed up look. Make sure that you know where everything is. Little trick. Another trick of the day. Although I do that every time, so I guess it doesn't come up. Now we're gonna half hitch off. Once again, sorry about how close I got to the bead. That was me not paying attention. okay it can happen at that point as long as my thread doesn't break the rest of the time take these squeeze scissors just get each one of these small fibers that hook down on me all right and there you have the Bryce Miller flies pheasant bugger not the brighter not the Brian gun bar even though just as good. Gunner Brian Barr. Wow. I need to stop saying words. Backwards. Names backwards. You guys can make fun of me in the comments if you want. I fully deserve it. But anyways, uh, thank you for watching today's segment. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking to buy some great outdoor gear, fishing gear, or even fly tying supplies, go to our store at www.fishingandoutdoors.ca for Canadian shoppers and fishingoutdoors.net if you're in the US or international. Please give this video a thumbs up, like, and also click that little subscribe button and little reminder bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Thank you <laughs> again and I am looking forward to seeing you back here next Sunday. Have a great Sunday.